There's been an uneasy relationship on this river between the potential for tourism and the demand for power. Fortunately, the Hooker Falls were left alone, but six kilometers downstream, an unusual compromise was reached at Aratiatea. In the 1960s, a power station was built here, diverting the river and causing the famed Aratiatea rapids to disappear. But the spillway is opened three or four times a day to let the rapids flow for the benefit of kayakers and tourists. Hi, guys. Hey, Craig. Howdy. Hey, yeah. Uh, one of you is Ben and one Jared? Yeah, I'm Ben. Jared. Good to meet you. Yeah, so it's a placid river now, but I understand the next half hour water level's going to rise very suddenly. Yep, the water's going to be probably a couple of metres above our heads. How does this rapid relate in terms of grades, in terms of, you know, degree of difficulty? Oh, this rapid unique in the world from what I've seen in my travels. But yeah, it, it's definitely at the higher end of what is possible in a kayak at the moment in, in kayaking worldwide. It is a shame to see what was obviously a, a pretty special and, uh, and, and scenic place be um, controlled by man and, and to have the dam and the uh, electricity generation here. But yeah, I guess it's not ideal, but it's better than having no rapid at all. What does the Waikato mean to you personally? Being New Zealand's longest and largest river, the Waikato obviously has, has with it a bit of mystique. I grew up on the banks of the Waikato River in Hamilton, so you know, I, I grew up swimming in it and, and jumping off cliffs into it. And then um, once I started kayaking, you know, there was always the draw back to the Waikato River. And, you know, within her banks, she's got some of the most renowned and I guess the rapids with the most mana in the country. When the spill gates are open, the water gushes into the narrow gorge at 90 cubic metres a second, and the results are spectacular.